Welcome to episode 58 of Sport SA Daily Diary. Today we're chatting to Springbok women's captain, Baba Walacha. How are you, uh, Baba? How are you doing today? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, very good, thank you. Um, you're in uh, Johannesburg at the moment, is that correct? Uh, that is incorrect. <laughs> I live in Cape Town, Kailicha. That's Cape where Town. I currently am. Sorry. Um, well, uh, you've, um, oh, well, we'll get into your career. You've had an amazing uh, uh, short but well-lived rugby career. Um, the first amazing fact is that you are the first woman from Africa to ever turn pro at rugby. Yes, that's 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 true. <laughs> that's true. Um yeah, <laughs> it's a, I think uh, it's 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 a great achievement for from a personal um, perspective, um, also for women's rugby as a whole in on the continent and in South Africa. But the key thing is that we should be having more of such things. You know, I mean, we are a rugby nation after all. It shouldn't in 20 we have you know firsts of such a nature. But you know, I think. Um, it's a it's it's a great start, and I'm very optimistic about the future of, of women's rugby and and having a lot more professional uh, African players abroad. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, you say that you're the first, and and you, we want to grow it, but there always needs to be a first, and there needs to be an example, and and you are very much setting that example, which is uh, brilliant for any young aspiring rugby player. Um, but rugby was always your game. Not at all. Um, not at all. I was an avid footballer before rugby. I loved soccer. Um, you know, it was my dream that one day I'd play for Banyana Banyana. <laughs> I had some. Um, I was also quite uh, um, into do field events and the like. Um, I came across rugby, you know, later in my in my teens. Um, going into early 20s, actually, um, when I got to the University of the Western Cape. And that's when I first, uh, you know, seriously uh, it took the sport up. Um, geez, I've had very brief encounters with the sport, such as in Kailicha, um, there was a program, VUCA program, run by the South African Rugby Legends Association. I remember back then, but it was never anything that I thought I would actually, uh, you know, take up until I got to university. Did you always enjoy watching rugby or were you more of a football girl? Um, no, I was, I, was, I, was, I, was a, I was a football girl. Um, but uh, I actually didn't know that women's rugby existed until I got to university. Until I actually saw women playing, girls playing, I was like, geez, I didn't know that this happened. And that's what made me a lot more curious. I wanted to check it out, and man, did I check it out! <laughs> so, tell us how you actually got into rugby, because I believe you were um, playing a bit of football and doing a bit of athletics, and then you you joined the sevens team at UWC. Tell us how that yes. that actually happened. Yeah. I mean, did you just go and rock up one day, or did someone tell you to come and play? Um, two of my, my now friends and one former teammate, um, they actually approached me during my athletics training. I was busy. I remember I was busy on a track at, at UWC, and they approached me. Um, they said, hey, you, you, I look like someone who would be able to play rugby. How about I go with them and have a look? And in that week, I went to the training session and saw them training. Um, they asked me to join. Um, I did, you know, they showed me the basics. Um, it, in that weekend, actually, we were going to go to a tournament um, hosted by USA, University Sports South Africa um, Association. Yeah. They run varsity sports and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, then we left that week and I got to play and then I just started playing ever since then. So, I mean, after that, you moved to the Western Province women's team um, and you your position is prop. That's quite a technical position for somebody who hasn't really been involved in rugby for very long. 
Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. Um, I had to learn very quickly, really. And both fortunately and unfortunately for me, a lot of the things I had to learn during match situations when I was, you know, head to head with another with another prop, um, then I sort of got comfortable with the position and learned um, to make it my own, you know, uh, just, I just wrote with it. So I had to learn very quickly, a lot, but in a very short period of time. And I'm very grateful to have had, you know, um, teammates and, and coaches like Loazi, who was very hands-on in helping me develop into 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 a, a proper um, tight head prop. Well, I mean, you certainly have developed, and you've developed very quickly. I mean, you've had a, a short career, but it's an explosive career. Um, explosive a bit like the way you play. You're quite an explosive <laughs> player. Uh, I'd, I'd like to think so. Um, I, I do sort of have a physical presence, which works in my advantage, <laughs> really. And, yeah, I just enjoy um, what I do, and that makes it... I think enjoyable to watch, you know. And do you enjoy the the contact element of the game? Yes, I think that's the main reason why I switched from sevens to fifteens. Actually, um, I enjoy the, the the contact aspect, um, you know, of 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 rugby. I love the physicality of it. Um, I'm not one who shies away from that. In fact, I will go and find it um, in in a match situation. Um, yeah, I just love the fact that it's it's it's. It's something that um, you know traditionally, uh, you know, we wouldn't be expected to be able to do, and we are doing it, you know, quite successfully. Driving things for me to actually physical. I want to do all of those things. Away from football and with the new career possibility in rugby. Could you repeat that for me, please? I didn't quite get it. You um, you're actually giving younger girls the opportunity to aspire to something new in terms of uh, in terms of the sport of rugby, which otherwise may not have been a, even an option or something that they would look at. I think you know the most important thing is that I am from Kalicha, you know, a place where ordinarily such stories wouldn't come on an everyday occurrence. So I think that it's very important for for me to to be present in, in all spheres of the of the sport. Um, you know, because a little girl from Kalicha or oh boy should be able to to look at me or read about me and think that they too can can do the same, if not go beyond that. So it's extremely important that we or I become a good example, you know, so that so that you know the next generation of Babalwas, you know, can exist. They can confidently exist and say, hey, we had someone from Kailita, which is one of the most yeah. notorious townships in Cape Town, probably South Africa. She's achieved so much in, in the sport that she loves. And on top of that, she has a sound education. So there is no reason why we cannot aspire to, you know, to do the exact same thing. So I think that present, representation is very important. It's important that we are out there. It's important that we, you know, we, we continue to, to, to do such, such great things. Or at least narrowly wouldn't come about from a place like Kailicha, stereotypically. I very much agree with you there. Um, but I mean, you, you again, you just gone up and up and up and up. You are obviously, a but not only a Springbok, you are the captain of the Springbok. So you, uh, your rise is just uh, in some Where does it stop? <laughs> I, I hope it never stops. I just, I, you know, I, we, we work towards constantly growing and elevating and in essence, elevating those around us. So I really, really hope that it, 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 it doesn't stop.
No, I mean, it is, it's very special. Um, you've captained now the South African team and you qualified for the World Cup, the Women's World Cup next year. That's an exciting uh, <laughs> opportunity for the team. Yes, it's, it's extremely exci exciting. Um, you're quite correct. We have qualified for, for the World Cup, which um, is set to take place in New Zealand uh, next year, if if according to plan, um, the stream of women had in international rugby, if you recall. Um, I think our our last our last World Cup was in 2014. In fact, that was the last time we ever um, competed internationally. Then in 2017, we 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 saw the reemergence, if you like, of of the Springbok women. We came out as uh, the SA Select side, which then led to. The year 2018, we were, we were the, the official um, women's team. So I think that you know the the, the next World Cup will, will be a great opportunity for 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 the team to to grow and and um, you know be competitive internationally. In fact, you know exist. Um, and we really hope that maybe we can we can we the 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 men's group of it you know we saw how momentous it was for the whole world for the for the whole country so wouldn't that be something you know could you imagine yourself and uh, Sia Khaleesi both standing there with the World Cup trophies <laughs> I mean, that, <laughs> that's the ultimate dream um, who would you say is is your toughest opposition that you need to watch out for in uh, in the World Cup coming up um, look I think that everyone wants to be the best. Um, everyone wants to beat the best, and currently the best are New Zealand. Um, you know, they they they're the they're the reigning champions. You know, we'd like to to um, you know compete on that level. Um, of course, England and 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 France, are the top three top three nations. But I think for me, the, the biggest one would actually to compete with the best in the world, and that is New Zealand. So. I'm looking forward to a game, the Springbok women versus the Black Ferns. That's, that's, I think that's, that's just, that would be just amazing, really. In the final, of course. In the final, of course. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, Laura, you have a, a younger sister who's also started to play rugby, a little bit younger than you. Um, do you think there's an opportunity that we're going to see the, the Lacha sisters in the, in the Springbok team together? <laughs> <laughs> um, my sister is 12 years younger uh, than I am, um, so oh. there's a chance that uh, you know I, I may have retired, may have you know, retired with the, by the time she gets to to the Springbok Women's Team, but I'll definitely still be um, you know within the rugby setup. So I think the world must watch out for 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 a younger Lacha um, coming up soon. <laughs> Well, there's no reason why you can't play at the age of 30 and she can't come spring into the team at the age of 18. <laughs> of course not. Of course not. Is she at uh, the same position that, as you are or did, where does she play? No, she she plays lock. She's very tall for, for a 14-year-old. So she's she's grown fond of the idea, you know, of being, you know, some kind of a, of a Victor Matfield or... You know, some Ebenezer birth of sort, the female version, of course. So she just, she, she loves, she loves playing number four. And uh, well, do you? I believe you have a nickname. Are you going to tell us what that <laughs> name is? <laughs> I'm guessing, I'm guessing it's Beast. It is, yes. Where did that come from? Um, that came from, from, um, you know, my teammates and a lot from the people who, who you know, who come out to watch our games. They just, for some reason, whenever I got the ball, they just started shouting Beast, which is what the whole of South Africa does when Beast and Tawarira, um, you know, gets a ball. And apart from that, I think that uh, um, in my early years of 15 rugby, I started at number one. That is the loose head prop. And I admired, still do, though. I admired Beast a lot. Um, I tried to emulate his way of playing. And my teammates started calling me Beast. And then I think it stuck, really. Um, generally, we watch, we watched by people who know us. Um, so they just they just they, they just do that. They just they just call me Beast. So it kind of stuck. It stuck quite a lot. And I'm one of these um, biggest fans. That was that too. But 
yeah, it's just a, a rugby thing. Well, I think uh, the men's team is going to have to come out to New Zealand next year, beast included, and, and come and support the women in, in the World Cup. They should do that, just like um, all South Africans, um, you know, should follow women's, especially the Springbok women, and support us vehemently. You know, that would, that would just be amazing. Yeah, no, absolutely. And um, you, you mentioned that you're an important role model now, which you absolutely are. You're the captain of, of the national team of, of one of the biggest sports in the country. What is your sort of advice to young girls in terms of um, not only from a rugby perspective, but, you know, playing sports to be able to build their self-morale, to maybe get out of the difficult situations that they live in, um, to be able to stick up for themselves in terms of gender violence, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of messages that, that one could give out. What is the most important message that you feel is most relevant to young girls in South Africa now? I think um, I think the, mo the I think the most important thing that uh, you know one can take out of, of, of all of this is that you know um, young girls need to be empowered more than now more than ever, and I think that sport can be a great tool to do that and to open up opportunities, especially educational opportunities, so that we may see a generation of young female leaders in the near future. And I think that, you know, sport, getting involved in sport, play, you know, such an important role in actually, you know, opening up, you know, such uh, such opportunities. So um, I think that, uh, you know, it's very important that we encourage um, young girls and boys, but particularly um, African girls, you know, to, to sort of open up their minds or open up themselves, you know, to, to a better future through sport and using you know, sports as, as, as a tool to do that, because I believe that there are thousands of extremely, extremely talented, um, you know, young girls who can do so much amazing things, you know. Um, so the most important thing is that they be exposed um, to those types of things. And uh, just in closing, in terms of sort of rugby itself and specifically, um, I suppose a lot of people still see it as a, as a man's sport, which is, uh, you know, old fashioned and the wrong way to think. But what advice would you give to young girls that are a bit unsure about um, I think I think that uh, you know I think is like you say it's, it's a very Come in, come and join us. It's actually great fun. We empty. Um, I'm having a bit of trouble um, hearing, especially the last part. Could you just uh, repeat the last part for me, please? It was just about um, Sorry. what advice would you give to young girls in terms of uh, encouraging them to come and play rugby? Because it's still seen as a male sport, which is you know a prehistoric way of thinking. Um, but it's still, it's physical, it's, it's hard contact. Girls that might be worried, uh, it's, it's a bit too tough for me. What, what advice would you give to them? Um, it's unfortunate that, uh, you know, we still uh, get people think that, you know, rugby is for boys and not. I think that rugby is for everyone, whether you and, and build good relationships. So I think that, um, you know, it's, it would be great if, if more young girls would take the sport up. There's nothing to be afraid of. It's amazing how much our bodies can can be able to evolve, um, you know, within the, the, the sport. So it's a great way to, 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 to just start doing that. And more importantly, by having more girls play the sport, more of them will be bashing, you know, down that, that stereotype that, uh, Rugby is for is for boys, so I encourage you know girls to to come have fun and come express themselves and come be free because with rugby I think comes freedom. Really, you can literally go mad on a rugby field, you know, without anyone you know telling you off or anything like that. Yeah. Oh, your your um, passion and enthusiasm for rugby is absolutely brilliant. So uh, it exudes from from you. Um, Thank you so much for joining us today on Sport SA Daily Diary. It's been great to chat to you. 
Um, good luck with your career in Spain and uh, good luck with the World Cup next year. We are going to be holding thumbs and feet and toes and everything <laughs> that uh, South Africa comes to the trophy. Thank you very much. Um, it's, it's been a pleasure chatting to you and I hope we, we do it again in the near future. Absolutely, that would be brilliant. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Catch us again tomorrow on Sport SA Daily Diary, where we will be chatting to the fastest woman in South Africa, sprinter Karina Horn.